Hi, hello. I would be willing to bet you either clicked on this video because your digital files are a hot mess. Everything is so messed up. If that's the case, no judgment, or you're like me and you just love to organize all the things. Either way, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to organize your digital files for an entire unit. Now we are gonna be focusing primarily on digital file organization, but if you are interested in the physical side of this, what do you do with all those things you've printed out? Let me know down in the comments and I can do a future video on that as well. Now to get started, you need some place to store your digital files and I'm gonna recommend you use some form of a cloud-based storage. That way you can access your files from any device, whether you're at school or at home versus storing them on just a computer and that's the only place that you can access them. In this video, I'm going to be using Google Drive, but keep in mind, you can follow this same set of steps with another cloud-based storage such as Microsoft OneDrive. So here's an example of what my school Google Drive typically looked like. I had folders for the grade I taught, so fourth grade. I had folders for each subject I taught, such as math, science, and social studies. I had a folder for the school, and I had a folder for the district. Now, you will notice the numbers in front of those. It's just to keep them in the order that I want, because by default, Google Drive wants to order them in alphabetical order, but I, being the way that I am, want my folders in a specific order. So by putting numbers in front, I can achieve that. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a separate folder for the unit we are organizing. For this example, we're gonna organize a math unit. So I'm gonna go into my math folder and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna title it whatever the unit title is or the unit number. So in order to create a folder, I'm gonna right click, choose new folder, and I'm gonna give it a name. I love to type in all caps. So this is gonna be unit five. I'm gonna click create. Now, of course, I can color code this unit folder, and you may notice within my drive that math was orange, but that's just because I was going in rainbow order. Within all of my math unit folders, I might choose to color code them by the marking period that I teach them. So maybe all of the units I teach in marking period one will be red, all the units I teach in marking period two will be orange, and so on. It's completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and make it orange just so it matches. I'm gonna right click, come down to change color, and select orange. Now I need to move all of those files that were just hanging out at the bottom of my drive driving me crazy, pun intended. That's a pun. Got it. Into that unit folder. Now, these are all just example files that I have pulled in order to demonstrate this. I could click and drag each one into that folder. I also can click with my mouse and drag in order to highlight all of the files at once and then click and drag them into that folder. I also can highlight them all, right click, choose move to, then I can select that folder. So I'm gonna go to math, unit five, and select move here, and it will put them all at one time into that folder. So now I'm gonna go back to my unit five folder, and now I have all of these files, and it's great that they're all in one folder, but I need to further categorize them so that I can find things faster. Now, some of these files are not gonna go into other folders. I'm gonna leave them out, which I will talk about that when I get there. But I do wanna start to create some categories in order to group files together. Now, the categories you create are completely up to you. It might vary by subject area or even by unit, just depending on the types of files that you have. If you already have a preset curriculum, you might group them based on the components of the curriculum. But just a few examples, I might create a folder for homework. Don't come for me, okay? Sometimes you teach at a school and you have to give homework, okay? It is what it is. I might create one for exit tickets or I might even just call it assessments and I could put pre-assessments and exit tickets in there. I don't know, I might create one for activities and I might create one called review where I'm gonna put different materials I have for review. I know another good one to have, one called examples. This is where you can put examples from students' work, either that you've created yourself or you've saved from previous years. It's always great to have examples to pull up. 
So now I have these categories. I want to color code these folders and I'm just gonna make them orange so they all coordinate. I'm gonna click and drag in order to select all five folders at once, right click, hover over change color, and then select that orange. Now is the fun part. I'm gonna start sorting my files. So for example, homework, I'm gonna put that into the homework folder. I can click and drag it in there, or I can right click, select move, just like I showed you before. Let's see, this Kingdom of Gallon, I'll put that under activities. Popper Palooza, that would be an activity. Rock, paper, scissors. This is more review because it's going over all the different measurement conversions. So I'm gonna drag that into review. Case of the Melted Snowman, that's gonna go in activities. Trasketball, that's a review game. So I'm gonna drag that into review. Oh. I'm already finding something that's not fitting. So this is a full like lesson plan and you may or may not have that. Some schools require it, some schools don't. Some teachers want a full lesson plan, some don't. But if you had lesson plans, I'm kind of adapting as I go, I'm gonna make another folder and I'm gonna call it lesson plans. Create. And this is something you will do as you're organizing your unit files. You're just gonna make changes and adapt as you go. You're gonna create homes for things that don't have homes. This lesson plan did not have a home, but now it does. <laughs> What's being measured, that's an activity. Okay. So I mentioned that some of the files I'm not gonna put into folders. Their home is gonna be just within the main unit folder. So here are some examples of that. First of all, this unit overview. I have an entire video on how to create this along with the free template that you see here. I highly suggest creating a unit overview to just hang out in that unit folder because it becomes like your cliff notes or like your one-stop shop for the entire unit. So you will see here, I have my standards and objectives listed out. I have vocabulary listed out. I have a list of those physical materials I would use for this unit. So even though they're not being stored digitally, I know what I'm gonna need to pull from my cabinets. I have links to all those digital materials and videos and digital manipulatives, so they're super easy to access because I can click and be able to open it up from here. I can see a preview of it, so my lesson planning is much easier. I have a list of those activities as well as ones I probably have physically in my room, assessments, different strategies I can use to differentiate, how I'm gonna connect it to other curriculums and the real world, the lesson progression, and then notes. So if you are interested, I have a full video on how to create this, which will be linked for you down in the description box. Something else that I would just keep in that main unit folder would be my slides. Now, not everyone teaches from slides, I get it, but for me, my slides kept me on track and made sure that I didn't forget anything, leave anything out. So I would create a set of Google Slides for every unit I taught. It made it super easy year after year to come back and just make little changes. And I would actually hyperlink them. So I would list out all of the lessons and I could use this like table of content slide in order to navigate to those different lessons. I have a full video where I show you how to set this up. And I also have these Google Slides templates available in my TPT store, so I will link that for you as well. It includes timers, which again is great for staying on track during your lessons. But because I would be using these slides for the entire unit, I just kept it in that main unit folder. And the final file that I would leave in the unit folder would be my anchor charts. Again, I have videos on how to create digital anchor charts. These specifically are from a set that I have on TPT for upper elementary math. All the anchor charts are already created, but they are also fully editable, so you can go in, customize them. This is something that I would kind of develop with my students. I would then print it poster size and display it in my classroom, and I would also print little mini sizes that they could keep in their notebooks as notes. But I just made a copy of the main file where I had all of the anchor charts for the full year, and I deleted the ones that weren't related to this unit. So now I have a set of Google Slides with just the anchor charts for this specific unit, and that way it makes it really easy for me to pull what I need, and because I'm gonna use it all unit long, I'm just gonna leave it in that main folder. Now let's quickly talk about what do you do with those paper copies that correspond to a unit, but you don't wanna forget about them, like ideally you would love to have them in your Google Drive, you have a few different options. Option number one is to recreate it digitally. 
It's not the best option because it is time consuming, but if it's a worksheet, you can recreate it in Google Slides or in Google Docs. I know you're probably thinking I don't have time for that, so I'm gonna show you another option. You may not have known this, but your regular old cell phone actually has a built-in scanner where you can take a physical paper like this and turn it into a digital PDF. Now I'm using iPhone, I am team iPhone. If you are team Android, I can't help you. There's probably another video out there that can, but all I've done is opened up the notes app on my phone and created a new note. From here, I'm gonna select the camera icon and I'm gonna choose scan documents. It's gonna open up my camera and I'm just gonna scan this kind of worksheet that I have a paper copy of. And you will notice it captured it. It's not perfect, but it captured it and it now has made it into a PDF. So I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna click save because I'm just scanning this one page, but if I have multiple pages, I can do that. And now I have this Math Bakery PDF file. From here, I can hold down my finger and I can choose share and I can select my Google Drive by scrolling over. There's Google Drive. And I can select the folder I want it to go into. So I'm just gonna go into teaching, my drive, math, unit five, and let's say this is activities. I'm gonna put it there, click save here, upload it. And now going back to my computer, if I go into activities, you will notice that I have that PDF. Again, it's not perfect, but it is a much faster version than trying to recreate it within Google Slides or Google Docs. So that's it. That's how I organize all of my unit files. I would obviously repeat this process for each unit and for each subject area, but I did wanna share some tips in case you're a little bit overwhelmed. First of all, if your Google Drive is a hot mess and the thought of trying to manipulate all of these files is just giving you gray hairs out the wazoo, it's okay. What I would suggest doing is creating a folder called stuff to go through or work in progress, whatever you wanna call it. Put everything into that folder and then a little bit at a time, you can start moving things out. That will give you almost like a fresh start, a clean slate to be able to create those unit folders, get things going, and then just slowly move your files into them. My second tip is to color code things in a way that makes sense for you. I showed you how I made all of the folders orange because I just kept it consistent with my math color, but I already mentioned that you could choose to color code them by the marking period you teach the unit. You can make each unit a different color. There is no right or wrong way. It just needs to be a system that makes sense for you. My third tip is to add the unit folder to your starred section. So your starred section is almost like your bookmarked section of Google Drive. It gives you really easy access. So instead of having to click into a bunch of different folders, you can add that kind of final destination into your starred section and get to it more quickly. In order to do that, I'm gonna come back to my math folder. I'm gonna right click on the unit folder and I'm gonna select add to starred. Personally, I would add my unit folders I was currently working with for all my subject areas to my starred section and then it was part of my like weekly and monthly routine to kind of keep my starred section up to date because ultimately you don't wanna add everything to your starred section it defeats the purpose. So whenever I would finish a unit and start a new one, I would remove the unit from the start section, which I can follow those same steps, right click on the folder and choose remove from starred. And then I would add the next unit folder to that start section for easy access. Speaking of routines, my next tip is to develop a routine of immediately adding any new file to the correct spot of your drive. So if I have a new activity for measurement conversions, rather than just dumping it into my drive wherever I want, I'm gonna take the time to file it away into that correct section. Section. It's just like a filing cabinet. I want to put it in the correct folder so that it is there when I am ready to teach that unit. I am not changing the way I do my files. I also would want to add it to that unit overview document that I showed you so that when I sit down to lesson plan, I know exactly what I have to pull from. My next tip is to utilize the search function. If you have a unit with a ton of files and even after organizing them into folders, it still feels overwhelming, you can actually search not only within your drive, but also within a specific 
folder. And this is especially helpful if you have put everything into a work in progress folder, you can help find the files you want using those key words. So in order to search within a folder, you can just right click on the folder and select search within and it will have that folder name. So I'm gonna select search within unit five. It's gonna bring up all of those files in there, but from here I can then search. So I know that I had that popper palooza activity. I might type in popper hit enter, and it's gonna pull up any files that have that keyword. Now, you may be wondering, well, how does this work for things that we scanned like this, where it doesn't have a text box that says Math Bakery. It's almost like its own image, if you will. It will still be able to pull that text. Let's do Bakery. It still pulls up that same file. And then my final tip, this is really about keeping up with the organization. Spend a little bit of time at the end of the school year, or if you even wanted to do it at the halfway mark as well, going through your folders, cleaning out files that you're no longer using, making sure everything is organized, it has found its home. If it hasn't, create a new folder for it or take your time to put it where it needs to go. I actually have a full video on tips for cleaning out your Google Drive at the end of the school year, which I will link for you down below. That's gonna wrap up this video. I truly hope that you found it helpful. Again, if you would like a follow-up video on how to organize all the physical materials, so things like your books and your laminated cards, let me know and I can create that video for you. But if you did enjoy this, found it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.